Heavenly Father, this song, you deserve all the glory. Lord, unto you and from you are all things. Just think about that. You have created everything. The seed I'm sitting, you created it. The work, the food, the air I breathe, this planet Earth, the sun, the stars, the moon, the clouds, the rain, birds, animals, you created everything. You created me. And it says you didn't just create everything, but it's unto you that it's been created. It's for your purpose. So even that little irritating mosquito is for your purpose. That means that means I'm for your purpose. I was created for your purpose. You've got a plan for my life. I was not a mistake. I was not an accident. I was not a plan of my parents. Long before they dreamed about me, you dreamed about me and you created me for your purpose. And unto your glory. So Lord, I just surrender for your glory. Let your will be done in my life. Let it happen. Why did you create me? Let it happen. I want to live for you. And I want to live for your glory. And I want to see, let your glory come through my life. And let my life bring the difference you want it to bring in a time like this. Unto you be all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. I think after that prayer, we can drink coffee and let's go home. Amen. All right. How's that? Okay. Kids Church, uh, Sharon, thank you so much. The kids may leave. We're going to take up an offering. Thank you so much for giving at Renovoff Grace Church to support, keep the building open, electricity, you know all the stories that we can do with that. Thank you so much for that. Uh, elders, deacons, they're going to take up the offering um, and we're not going to pray again over that. You can just start taking up the offering. I think important in the announcements is that the Bible study is closed for now, correct Cindy? Yes. And it will only open up in January again. Um, sorry, we haven't discussed this, but have you guys decided what are we going to do over Christmas weekend? Are we going to have church the Sunday and the Monday? Uh, Sunday is the 24th and Christmas is the 25th? No, we haven't, we haven't finalized those plans yet. Okay, just keep a lookout to see on Christmas weekend what are we going to do? Service on the Sunday and Monday or maybe just on the Monday? We will confirm that with you guys so that you know and can plan ahead over Christmas weekend what's going to happen at the church and you can um, invite your family and friends. All right, so this morning, um, I don't know what time was it. I must look on my phone. So this morning, I'm like lazy waking up and uh, going to my study, opening my Bible, and it's like, oh, Jesus, what an amazing day. I can rest. Tommy is going <laughs> to preach. Oh, thank you for a good day of rest. I open up my phone, and I don't want to open my phone because then you go into Facebook and all the rubbish, you know. So I don't want to open my phone. I'm busy with my Bible now. And I think, let's just have a look what's on the phone. And I see this little name, Tommy Outreach Grace Church. And I think, oh, my friend sent me a text message this morning. Oh, what a lovely pastor. <laughs> and then the message read something like, you will be preaching this morning. Okay. <laughs> and my whole morning changed. Okay. Um, we are off to South Africa in two weeks' time. So I'll only be here next Sunday again. 
And then we're off to South Africa for about a four-week trip, taking the family for the first time back in four years, blah, blah, blah. But I must preach at my church in South Africa all the Sundays, uh, Christmas, New Year's, and two Sundays in the New Year. So I'm looking forward to that because that's going to be an Afrikaans, the heavenly language that um, <laughs> Jesus told me. We're only going to speak Afrikaans in heaven. That's... You don't believe me, get closer to Jesus and he'll help you, okay? But in any case, um, so I'm going to preach in my mother tongue, my language. I'm so excited about it. I'm working on about four sermons at once and I'm very excited about it. And then this morning, all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, well, I combine all four sermons for you guys. I was thinking of, let's stay here like for three, four hours, <laughs> And let's work those four sermons out together, me and you, okay? Uh, uh, is it only me getting excited? <laughs> okay. So excuse it if the sermon is not flowing very nicely because I've got so many different storylines in my brain at the moment. But I'm going to try and stick to one, okay? Uh, Christmas is a season of hope. You agree? Yes. Christmas is the birth of hope for the humankind. I mean, it was dark. Uh, God wasn't speaking. If you go back into the Old Testament, it's kind of like 400 years between the last book of the Bible. What's the last book of the Bible's name? Uh, uh, sorry, of the Old Testament, not New Testament. Malachi. Malachi. Where's Malachi? I've got a friend named Malachi. You know, that's why I did it. Hello, Malachi. Okay, so from Malachi to Matthew, they say it was about, I think, 400 years of silence. Now, no hope, no light, no Messiah. Can you imagine the Jews, the, the Hebrew people, waiting for their Messiah to come for 400 years? So Christmas is the birth of hope. There's all of a sudden a light appears in darkness. It's not just the sun or, or what was it, the star at Christmas birth. It, it was bigger than a star. It was not just a physical light, it was a spiritual light going on for humanity, not just for a season, for eternity. Do you see the big difference? Because of Christmas, there's hope. And, and I've got a verse that's busy in my heart, like crazy busy, Romans 15, 13, in the, in the Passion Translation, I'm going to read it to you and we're going to just play around this verse for this morning. Um, it says, Now may God, the fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy. <laughs> I, I would like joy like that. Uncontainable joy. It's like uh, winning the football Super Bowl joy. Have you seen those people? Crazy, man. They irritate me, okay? It's just the game. Get over yourself. But they are like, ah, ah, okay? Have you seen them lost? <laughs> I mean, they start crying about a game. It's just a game, okay? But uncontainable joy is when you win the Super Bowl like 220 times in, the row, in a row, okay? It's like, we won it again. We're going to win it again next year. We're going to win it for eternity. We're never going to lose. That's un uncontainable joy, okay? That's big joy. Uncontainable joy and perfect peace. Oh, how we need peace. Huh? In America, we need peace. I don't know about you. I don't watch a lot of news. But every now and then when I do switch on the TV and see a little bit of news, I'm like, oh man, here we go again. I just switch it off. I, I try not to, but I do. I read South African news like kind of every day and I'm like, oh, boring, another story, another theft, another murder, another crime, another corruption, another this, no, oh no. We need peace. I mean, Israel needs peace. Yeah. They started the war again yesterday and already like 30 people killed. I mean, you release hostages, 100 people, but the next day you kill, I, I don't get it. Um, how do you kill and 
release at the same time. But we, the world needs peace. And it says perfect peace. Okay? So my, now may God, the fountain of hope, fill you to the overflowing of uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in Him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with His super abundance until you radiate with hope. You see, Christmas is the season of hope because He is the fountain of hope. Now, you know the meaning of a fountain. It is a source coming out you don't know from where. You can't see the beginning of the, the source of a fountain. It's under earth, under the, in dark where you don't see. But for some reason, this spot, there's water coming out. And it just keeps on coming out. Now, now in their time, Israel time, the history, a, a fountain was a source of life. Um, most fountains did not run dry when it was a drought season. So no rain, no water. But if you had a fountain, you were not um, subject to the circumstances of rain. You had a fountain. That is an unending source of whatever coming out of that fountain. Now he's saying, God is the fountain of hope. Now I, I need hope. When do you need hope? Let me, let me explain. Um, when you hope for something, when you have a promise, when you live with a dream, a desire, and you believe God told you that, it's a promise in the Bible, it's a promise on your life, it's a promise for your family, it's a promise for whatever, you've got this desire, this dream, this promise, and you don't see it. What do you need? Faith and hope. Hope that it will come true. And, and this is what it's about. Do you, have, do you have prayer request that you haven't seen being met yet? That's where you need hope. When, when you look at the country, America, my country, South Africa, when you look at government, big political institutes, and you think, there's no hope. <laughs> this can't change. This will never change. Me and Bob talked about South Africa before the service. And we were like, oh, it's going to take more than 20 years to change that. That's going to be a lifetime. That, that, this will never change. That's when you need hope. When you've got a sickness, a disease, a divorce, a poverty, unemployment. But you have this promise that God is good. And God will provide and God will heal and God will look after and God will hear my prayers and God will save my children and God will save my grandchildren. If you've got these promises but you don't see it yet, what do you need? You need hope to keep on going, to keep on believing, not to lose your faith. You need hope. Now the good news is, He's the God of the fountain of hope. So as I was working on this for South Africa, and I wanted to preach this actually next week, but as I was working on it, I'm like, I'm going to go to stories of hope in the Bible, of just people that were supposed to have a bad ending, and then God came around <laughs> And he changed the circumstance around and they've got this great ending <laughs> because that's hope. God turned it around.
about four. And that's way enough, okay? If I had as many kids as the sand of the sea, oh man, I would, I would kill myself. No, I'm not, I will not, but that's not a great vision. But for Abraham, that was a great vision, to have that many kids as father. I mean, Tommy sings when he preaches, I can also. Yeah. Many kids as father. Okay, I'm kidding, all right. So he had a vision of many kids, and then he only receives one. And you get it? And then he must go and sacrifice that one. And then the scripture says, hope against hope. Abraham believed that God would raise this son out of the death because God promised. And years later, a million plus people move into the promised land, all descendants of Abraham. So, so I mean, the whole Bible is stories of this hope, bad circumstance, or promise, bad circumstance, God came at the right time and turn it around. When? When you keep hope. If you lose hope, you never see the turnaround. If you switch off the story in the middle of the trouble, you only remember, oh, that bad movie. <laughs> oh, that movie with that bad ending. They all die at the end. The couple doesn't get together at the end. The, the mom doesn't find the kid or the dog doesn't find his whatever, or I don't know, the storyline, you know? Oh, that stupid movie, that's what I call them. That stupid movie that just ends so blunt. That is when you stop hoping. That is when you stop believing. The story is not done yet. God is still in control and he's working on it. But if you stop hoping, you switch off the TV. You switch off the storyline. So how do I continue hoping? How, how do I continue live with hope even years after? I mean, Abraham, and now you see, now I'm starting to get sidetracked because one of my sermons is about Abraham, but, um, and it's not this one. So, but Abraham... <laughs> got this vision, promised that he will get uh, a, a son and children and they will inherit the promised land. And he was living in a tent in the promised land, so no building. And he had only one son and he had to go and sacrifice him. But it was years, like, like I think 12 years before um, uh, Isaac was born. And then uh, I don't know how many years later, he had to move out and then 450 or 470 years later, the whole of the Hebrew tribe moved into the promised land with Joshua. I mean, people, 400 plus years to keep on hoping? That's what it's about. To keep your faith up. Now, I'm going to try and show you how to. And, and the story I'm going to use this morning is actually the story about the guy who wrote this verse. Paul, Paul himself. So Paul wrote the book of Romans, Romans 15. He wrote, so the God, the fountain of hope will give you uncontainable joy and peace and the Holy Spirit will surround you and will be in you. So the guy who wrote this had a personal experience of this. It's not just sitting in a study writing the Bible and thinking, hmm, what would be nice to write? Let's write about hope. Do you have any stories of hope? No, I don't have. Let's just write a story. Or let's just say God is hope. No. He wrote it because he had an experience where the God of hope came through. The story is in, is in Acts 27. Acts 27, um, Paul was taken captive. He was on a boat on his way to actually Rome where he will be um, sentenced maybe to death, he doesn't know yet, but he needs to be in front of the Caesar explaining his faith and his case and the Jews and everybody against him. And on that boat came a storm. And it was one of those storms that would destroy everything. That's the story. But listen to the words. I'm going to read to you Acts 27 from verse 18. He says, The next day, because of being battered, severely by the storm, the sailors um, you know, start throwing, I can't read, I need my glasses, the cargo, jet, what's it said? Jet, jet, jet and sent the cargo. 
And by the third day, they even threw the ship's tackle and rigging overboard. After many days of seeing neither the sun nor the star. Just listen to that. After many days of not seeing neither the sun nor the stars and with the violent storm continually to raise, rage against us, all hope of ever getting through it alive was abandoned. When all hope was abandoned. Were you ever in a story like that? Or let's put it, not a story, a storm like that. I mean... The divorce is going through. No turning around. The sickness, the unemployment, losing a house, losing a friendship, breaking off a relationship. I mean, I don't want to play the emotions, but people, have you ever been in a storm where all hope was gone? Now, they haven't seen the sun and stars for days. They haven't eaten for days. They were 100% convinced we are gonna die. <laughs> um, again, let's play movies. I love these movies where two people are stuck in an elevator or whatever, and they're like, we're gonna die here. And then they start confessing to one another. And just after the confession, the electricity goes back on and they're gonna say, and the guy's like, I lied, yeah, that, that didn't ever happen. I'm sorry, I didn't wanna to confess to you. Have you seen those movies? That, that is when you think you're gonna die, but then you don't die, okay? So, so this was one of those circumstances. They were 100% sure this storm is gonna kill all of us. So they did maybe start confessing to one another. Sorry, I stole your money. Sorry. In my days, I would say to my friends, sorry, I stole your lunchbox, okay? Uh, I did steal my friend's lunch because his mom made better sandwich than my mom. But in any case, so that's the confession you make, okay? Sorry, because you are sure you're gonna die. All hope of life was abandoned. So maybe you've been in a story like that. That's why Paul is writing this. And he says, um, hope of ever getting through it alive was abandoned. After being without food for a long time, you're hungry. You haven't slept. I mean, it's storm. It's no sun. You don't know if it's day or night. It's just storms and you're going to die. You haven't eaten. Paul stepped up before all of them and said, men, you should have obeyed me and avoided all. For no one will perish, only the ship will be lost. For God's angels angel to visit me last night, the angel of my God, the God. I passionately serve. He came and stood in front of me and said, don't be afraid, Paul. You are destined to stand trial before Caesar. And because of God's favor on you, he has given you the lives of everyone who is sailing with you. So men, Keep up your courage. I know that God will protect you, just as he told me he would. But we must run aground on some island to be saved. Now, Paul, in the middle of the storm, everybody has lost hope. Paul comes and say, I will give you hope. And I will give you the secret to how to keep on hoping. And the secret is very simple. And that's all that we're going to talk about. Well, and actually finish with that. Um, and that is you need an encounter with God to keep your hope up. So Paul, the night, sleeping, dreaming, angel appears, real or not real, vision or not vision, we don't know. But Paul had this encounter with God. And in the encounter, the angel said to him, get your hope back. Because I've got a plan for your life. Now, now, people, this is huge. It only takes one person to get an encounter with God 
to save a whole ship of people. (laughs) It only takes one person to say, I will passionately serve God. I will passionately keep my faith. I will wait and call upon God. So in every community, I believe, every church group, small group, every town, community, whatever, there are always spiritual leaders that God has called and said, wait upon the Lord and I will renew your strength and you will tell people, Christmas is a season of hope because the God who is the fountain of hope has not forgotten you. He's got a plan for your life. Get carried, stand up, believe again, live right because God is in control. And how can you say that? Only because you had encounter. Only because you have spent time with God. Only because the Bible came alive to you. Vision or no vision. Worship has come alive to you. Prayer has come alive to you. And you've got this some sort of encounter that you just know, that you know, that you know, God will do this. People, you need to spend time with God. If you want to keep your hope going, spend time with God. How do you spend time with God? Prayer, Bible, church, community, It's all there. You know the best part? It's all free. Doesn't cost money. I don't know about you, but everything these days costs money. Except the fountain of hope and life. He's available. It only takes a little bit of discipline. It only takes a little bit of love. It only takes a little bit of, of you stepping outside of your depression and negativity and whatever you want to call it and say, I'm going to spend time with him. And then you meet him and he will send an angel. He will send a scripture. He will send a song. He will send a verse. He will send a prayer and it will pick you up. And all of a sudden you will know that you know that God will come through. Even if you are like Abraham living in a tent and not really in the promised land yet, and not all the children God has promised you yet, you will have hope, hope against hope. Even if you are Paul in the middle of a storm, you will have hope against hope. Why? Because you have spent time with God. You encountered Him. Now, I want to I close the service with a psalm. Um, and, I, and I want you, if you... And it's fine, but if you do have your Bible with you, um, if you don't have your Bible with you, it's not fine. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's really fine. You can get it on your phone. It's everywhere. Psalm 136. And what we're going to do, we're going to kind of read it together. I know there is like 1,227 translations these days, um, but we're going to just pick anyone you've got on your phone or Bible you have, and you're going to read it by yourself but I'm going to read out of the, this translation. This is a new international version. Okay. I'm going to read it out of this one because, okay, before we read, 136. The reason we're going to read it is, I believe this psalm will help you to get an encounter with God. You say, what? Yes. This psalm, 136, says over and over again, And the love of God, the the enduring love of God will be forever. The unceasing love of God will be forever. And that's what you need in the encounter. In any encounter, you need confirmation that God is good and God is in control and that God loves you and that nothing can separate you from the love of God. And this psalm will help you with that. So whenever you are down, when, whenever you don't have hope, whenever you are depressed, go to a psalm. There are many. Psalm 62, Psalm 63, Psalm 103, Psalm 136 or whatever, okay? There are so many psalms that will pick you up. So we're going to read it together. And hopefully when we get to the end, You're just going to know that you know that the fountain of hope is within me. And I can have hope for this week. 
I can have hope for another day, another week. I can have hope to be obedient, to stay faithful till the rest of this year. I can stay with God as long as needed. All right, let's go. Psalm 136. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. And then these words, His love endures forever. That is the part I want you to read with me, okay? So I'll read the first part because it will be different in every Bible. But this part, his love endures forever. You have to say it. Not just listen to me saying it. It's because when your own mouth, or let, it turn, let me turn it around. When your ears hear it from your own voice, psychology, you believe your own voice more than you believe my voice. So your ear needs to hear your mouth saying, his love endures forever. <laughs> and when you start saying it, you will start believing it. Okay, let's go. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to God, uh, the God of gods, because his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords because his love endures forever. To him alone does great, for him alone does, oh, help me Jesus, does great wonders. His love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. Who made the great lights, his love endures forever. The sun to govern by day, his love endures forever. The moon and stars to govern by night, his love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, his love endures forever. And brought Israel out from among them, his love endures forever. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, his love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea uh, as under us, his love endures forever. And brought Israel through the midst of it, his love endures forever. But swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea, his love endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness, his love endures forever. To him who struck down the kings, his love endures forever. And killed mighty kings, his love endures forever. Shio kings of the Amorites, his love endures forever. And Ok, king of Bashan, his love endures forever. And gave their land as an inheritance, his love endures forever. An inheritance to his servant Israel, his love endures forever. He remembered us in, uh, us in our low estate, his love endures forever and freed us from our enemies. His love endures forever. He gives food to every creature. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. Have you picked up the storyline? He started with creation like we started. In our prayer, God has made everything, the little birds, mosquitoes, even you. Because his love endures forever. And then in the plot, they got a promise. They're going to the promised land, but there was a red sea in front of them. What took them through? His love endures forever. And then in the wilderness, what took them through? His love endures forever. And then the enemies coming against them, the different kings, his love endures forever. And then they got through that and into the promised land and it's all because of his love endures forever. How do you keep hope? Stay connected with him. And his love will give you hope in your storyline. 
and his love will endure forever. Let's pray together. Amen. Heavenly Father, every one of us is in a different storyline. Some of us is just starting our faith. And we need to hear, your love will endure me throughout my life. Some of us, we are in the middle of the desert maybe. We are in the middle of the chaos. We've got a storm like Paul or we've got a Red Sea or we've got whatever, a king against us. Your love will endure forever. Lord, some of us have seen the good days and we are in a season of life where we just want to tell other people this great God, the fountain of hope will come through to you. So Lord, we just come to you this morning and say thank you that your love will always give us hope. Christmas is a season of hope. You are the fountain of hope. And Lord, help us never to lose hope in the middle of the story, in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the chaos. You are a good God and your love endures forever. You will take us through anything and everything. Because your love endures forever. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen Amen. and amen.